Give it up for Ashley. Yes. And give it up for yourself. Smile at yourself. How many of you guys have to look at yourself in the mirror and laugh? Come on, sometimes. Don't take yourself so serious. No, no. She said, do you want me to take the sweater off? I am sweating up here. I had to, I, I was crying when I had to put the sweater on. I, I actually sick Kratos on the sweater this morning. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a cat guy. I'm a, I'm a dog guy, but... Uh, Anyhow, this is a cat, you know, and I don't really do cat. All you cat lovers, forgive me, but uh, I, I tolerate cats. They're all right. You're just a little sneaky, and I don't, I don't trust cats. <laughs> Something about cats, they're a little just, anyhow, please forgive me. If you have a cat, peace out, you know, bless your cat. Anyhow, welcome those of you here for the first time to encounter church, and uh, we, we love all of God's creation, even people. Uh, somebody, some people like their pets more than people. You know, they love God and don't like people too much. How many of you guys experienced some of that? It's like you ran into somebody. And uh, anyhow, welcome to Encounter Church, and happy birthday to my favorite one and only. And, uh, you know, I have Christmas, her birthday, and then next week I want to say happy anniversary uh, because next, next week we celebrate our 33rd year anniversary. Yes, I married her when she was 14. I was 16. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. And also, happy anniversary to Pastor Roy and Miriam next year, too. That's right. They're, it's not till October, but anyhow, uh, still. And happy birthday to everybody. You know, you're going to have a birthday at least once next year. Happy birthday. And do we have any other December birthdays? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, Franklin, everybody. I don't want to say happy birthday, happy birthday. And if you're a December birthday, you're awesome because you get to celebrate the birth of the king in this month. And you know what's awesome about this month is it's a month where Jesus comes and wants to birth something new and fresh in us. Amen. And how many of you guys, you feasted over the week, and uh, some people are glad to see Christmas come and glad to see it go. Uh, and maybe you are, but let the spirit of Christmas, come on, how many of you guys, you've seen all the, you know, I, I don't have full cable anymore, so Portia gets on, and she likes to get on the Hallmark Channel and watch Christmas movies, and I'm kind of sick of it. She likes, she likes the chick flicks, and the, we watched an adventure one, and, but I appreciate it because it does talk about the spirit of Christmas being about giving, and, uh, you know, we can be so self-centered sometimes and live in a selfish world, and we think about, someone said, uh, joy is, and this may sound a little cliche or so religious, is Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. That's what joy is. And I was like, Jesus, help me. No wonder I don't have that much joy. Am I not? No. Because no. <laughs> usually I have Jesus in the first. Sometimes he's in the second. I have myself in the first most of the time, if we're honest. Come on, let's be honest. Be honest, come on, and uh, the Lord's trying to help us. Look at your neighbor and say, the Lord's trying to help me. I know you wanted to say he's trying to help you. I know you wanted to say he's trying to help you. You are going to say it. Say he's trying to help me. Me too. Amen. And uh, so it's so glad to be with you on this Christmas, wonderful Christmas. You know, I love Christmas because the spirit of Christmas gets to live uh, us as Christians, the spirit of Christmas. Christmas, as you heard me say, we get to say Merry Christmas throughout the year because Christ is celebrated. We have a greater revelation of what Christmas is about. So when you go wherever you go today, you can ask someone as a little witness to say, how was your Christmas? And they may frown at you. They may say, I didn't have enough money. or I didn't get this. Or my kids were getting up. Whatever it is. But just, just love them and smile. And uh, I know the Lord's trying to help Pastor Steve be a little bit more patient. Stretch your hands towards Pastor Steve and say, Lord, help Pastor Steve be a little bit more patient. Especially when I'm driving, especially when I'm in the store. Thank you, Thessa. Thessa has both hands stretched toward me. She's like, Psst. how many of you guys know what I'm talking about? The, the Christmas crazy can get on you, right? And you say, well, what are you doing today? Because, you know, we, you fed on enough food already over the day, but 
so, and fed enough sweets and candy and all the cookies and all the parties. But now it's time for us to say, you know, because when all that is gone and said, and you've maybe, maybe you took a drink of the old wine or you had a inhale, you inhaled something that thought was going to get you high or did something that you thought was going to satisfy you. After it's all over and you're broke, busted, and disgusted, you realize that it's really Jesus that satisfies you. It's not the food, it's not the alcohol, it's not sex, it's not drugs, it's not anything else, but Jesus is what's really going to satisfy your soul and satisfy who you are and take you to where you want to be. And so as we are singing today about hope, hope is just expectation. Having hope is having expectation that God is going to do something new inside of you in 20. 22. And I said, well, you know what? I don't have to wait for it to start. I want it to start right now. Aren't you thankful that God's mercies are new every morning? His, his mercies are new to us. And as we were singing, I thought about this story. And it's a story about uh, some of you guys have heard of this man in your history, Napoleon, the great general of the French army, Napoleon. And he, was, he had his armies in battle. And uh, one of his generals, they were out going to battle and they went out to battle, but there was a private who was so afraid that he stayed back and he didn't engage in the battle. He was afraid. He was afraid. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. And so when the general got back, he snatched this private and he reprimanded him. And he went and he got the main general. He went and got Napoleon. And Napoleon walked up to that private and he said, sir, and, and he was afraid because he thought Napoleon the Great was going to reprimand him and just basically could have, could have taken his life, killed him, put him in prison. But he didn't do that. He said, young man, tell me your name. And the young man said, my name is Napoleon. And Napoleon the Great paused and says, well, if your name is my name, then I want you to live up to that name. And I was thinking about that in our life. If we are named after Jesus the Christ, if we call ourselves Christians, then we have nothing to fear and we can say, well, if we claim the name of Jesus, then let us live like Jesus lived. Amen. Let that be our prayer. And so as we come to this Christmas Sunday, I'm going to read some of my favorite verses. We're just going to go through them, and I'm going to read them together. How many know that feeding on Jesus and feeding on the Word of God will produce something inside of you? How many of you know that sometimes after you've sat down, I know for me one thing that I enjoy is just getting up in the morning, even though my Pastor Porsche, I'm a, I'm a morning person, Pastor Porsche is a night person. How many of you guys are married to someone like that? You're opposites. Opposites. Right. I know Pastor Marion is looking at Roy, he's up at four and she wants to sleep in. But anyhow, one thing I do is getting up and just quieting myself and so I can just have some quiet time with the Lord and I can feed off of him. There's no hell of vision. There's no noise. And sometimes he'll speak to you. A lot of times he will if you're hungry. That's why I love some of these songs. We sing, let every heart prepare him room. Let every heart prepare him. If you prepare him, he'll come to you. And so let's look at Luke chapter 1. We're going to read some verses. I'm going to read these stories to you, and then I'm going to pray them over you. But in Luke chapter 1, verses 28 through 38, the angel came to her, came to Mary, and said, Hail, you are highly favored. How many of you guys like favor? Everybody, you should. Come on. Favor. God favors you. You're favored, or whether you like it or not, the fact that you're here, you're favored by God. And some of us say, well, I don't deserve it. No, you don't. But God chooses to put his favor upon us. And he says, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw the angel, she was troubled at his saying and cast her mind at what manner of salutation this should be. I'm reading from the original King James. Forgive me, but if you, if you don't know the these and the thous. But, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. Come on, how many know God's perfect love drives out fear? God is a God of love. Fear torments. And I shared this last week with us. Fear is not of, doesn't mean we're not afraid, but we don't let fear grip us. Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. There it is again a second time. And behold, she conceived in the womb and, and brought forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. 
And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this being see I know not a man? And the angel answered her and says, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee or born of you shall be called the Son of God. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed. Lord, I thank you for Encounter Church that this is a house of favor. Lord, I thank you that everyone here today would know that they are favored by you. Lord, and that which you want to birth inside of our spiritual wombs, Lord, the fresh thing, the thing that you want to be manifest in us, Lord, to be more like you, Lord, that we will bring forth Jesus into this world, Lord. Let there be a birthing inside of us, Lord, and cause us to carry, Lord, that which you're birthing, that which you're doing inside of us, cause us to realize, Lord, when you birth something inside of us, Lord, we have to, a responsibility to live differently, Lord, to eat differently, Lord, to nourish ourselves differently, Lord, we don't want to abort that thing which is a, that's been birthed inside of us, Lord, that even as you say, Lord, we are not our own, that we are bought with a price, and so today, Lord, help us, Lord, to choose you so that what you've birthed inside of us, Lord, will come to fruition. Lord, and we thank you, Jesus, that you reign and rule over the nations. Lord, that you are the God and of your kingdom there is no end. Lord, I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon us afresh. Lord, for the power of the highest overshadowing us. Lord, and that which you are birthing inside of us, the holy thing of God that is born of us, Lord. Let us not doubt, let us not fear, for nothing is impossible with you. Lord, even where we've gotten in the way, Lord, where we've been stubborn and we've been rebellious, Lord, and we've made choices, Lord, contrary to your will. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you still come to us again and knock at the door of the, our heart, Lord. And, Lord, you put faith inside of us that we would declare nothing. Come on, can you say nothing is impossible with God? And then let's say this. Say, be it unto me according to your word. Let there be a performance of what you've spoken over my life in Jesus' name. That was Luke chapter 1. Now we're going to go into Luke chapter 2. And the angel, verse 10 through 15, and the angel said to them, this is the angel appearing to the, to the shepherds, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news. Come on, good, you have to smile when you say good news. I, you know today when we were singing rejoice, you know what rejoice means? It just means to look up. That's what rejoice is, look up. Come on, everybody look up. I told you the story last week. We were in New York one time, and we were just around the, uh, all the high, high buildings, and we just started looking up, and we were just playing around with people. But you start looking up, you'll get other people. Well, soon enough, pretty soon we had a crowd of people around us, and they were just staring. We were pointing in the sky. We were just making up stuff, acting silly. But soon enough, we had like 20 people around us looking up. And so that's a good thing. When you walk around, don't put your head down. Say, look up. And if you see somebody walking with we had our previous pastor, anytime she saw somebody with your head down, she would say, put your head up. You're not going down there. So keep your head up. She would tell this to Christians. You guys remember that. Wes probably remembers that. Walk with your head up. You're going up to heaven. Look up. Well, I, that's what David says. I will lift my eyes to the hills, Psalm 121. I will lift my eyes up to the hills where my help comes from. For my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And then it says, behold, he who keeps you and behold, he who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Aren't you God that God doesn't take a day off from you? God, when you come to God, God was like, oh, nope, I can't talk to you right now. I'm on break. I'm, on a, I'm taking a nap. It says, behold, aren't you glad that God is a keeper? Come on, he'll keep your mind if you want to be kept. Come on, he'll keep your eyes, he'll keep your ears, he'll keep your thoughts if you want it. And so it says, I bring you great tidings of great joy, which will be for all people. For unto you, everyone say me, I told you, said this, born to you this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you, you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. You know that you can walk around and just say that verse right there. You can just say glory to God in the highest. You can walk around. People may think you're crazy. Say, what are you doing? I'm just blessing God. Glory to God in the highest and peace, goodwill towards men. That's a promise that God has. That's why God is not mad at the world. God's not cursing the world. If God was mad at the world or if he was mad at you, you wouldn't have woke up this morning. God loves the world. We sang it today. He loves the world that he gave, and his love is still passionate. And I, we preach this and believe this, that there is going to be a greater awakening in our lives. It's going to start. Where is it going to start? It's going to start in you. It's going to start in your home. It's going to start in our church. It will start in our community. How many of you know that God is in the heavens, and God reigns in the heavens, and he reigns over the nations of the earth? So turn off the television. Turn off CNN, Fox and whatever, two, four, five, seven, it's all bad. They don't spread any good news. I, you know, I only get like two, four, five, seven. Everything is about murder, death, this virus, sickness. Everything is like, that is not good news. That's like, that's hell news. Everyone say, hell no. <laughs> Heaven yes. Say, get the, we had a shirt that said, get the hell out of here. Come on. That meant, that meant you. That meant get the hell out of your life. How many of you guys got some hell in you still? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, you do. Let somebody make you mad. Let somebody make you mad and see what comes out of you. You'll see if some hell is still in you. Pastor Steve still has He's working it out. See, he's working it out. And it came to pass. Aren't you glad it's going to come to pass? Look at you. Say, aren't you glad that this is, this is a good promise right here? Say, it will come to pass. Meaning, where you are right now won't stay there forever. How many of you know your season will change and God will bring you through? And it says, it's going to come to pass as the angels were gone away from. They said, let us, I love this verse, verse 15, because this is what you can say. That which God speaks into your ear, you can go and see it. And not just see it, you can experience it. And not just experience it, it will get down inside of your knower, meaning that you know 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 that God is real and God is for you. You'll know it. And God wants it to be like that. He wants you not just to hear it, not just to see it, not just to experience, but to know him. So, Father, I thank you that you will give us great joy and great peace. Lord, thank you, Lord, that we will feed off of your faithfulness, Lord. That, Lord, even as your word says, that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. And so we thank you that Bethlehem, Lord, is the house of bread. And so cause us to feed off of you. Lord, we thank you for the thing that you're birthing inside of us as a people, both collectively and corporately and individually. In Jesus' name, Isaiah 9, 2 says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of shadows, or it really doesn't say that, the land of the shadow of death, upon them the light has shined. How many know shadows aren't the real thing? And even shadows of death aren't really death. They're just shadows. And so how many of us sometimes we can live in shadows? Come on, we can dwell there. We can dwell in places that are, are not real. But uh, someone said fear is false evidence appearing. Thank you, Belinda. False evidence appearing real. And that's shadows. And sometimes we live in shadows. And that's where people are living today. A lot of people are, are living in shadows. And they like living in shadows because they want to stay there. How many of you know misery loves company? Right? And how many say, I'm not going to live in the shadows? That's why we came to the candlelight service last week. And it says that the people that lived in the shadows are the shadow of death. Upon them, the light has shined. That's you and I. I'll come back. I'm going to come back to this other verse. I'm going to think I'm going to end with this verse. And, and you know this well, Isaiah. We'll end with 6 and 7. Thank you. John chapter 1, it says, this is Pastor Portia mentioned to this. I know I'm jumping around. With some scriptures, but in John 1, verse 4 through 5, it talks about Jesus. It says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
and the light shines in darkness, and darkness does not comprehend it or comprehends it not. And it also goes on and says that men love darkness rather than light. Say, come on, say, let not that be about me. Let me love light more than darkness. How many know that fallen part of you, that sin nature, loves darkness more than light? But your spirit, man, that renewed part of you loves the light. And it loves the light. And Jesus is the light. And Jesus calls you and I the light. Verse 9 says, he was the true light which lighteth every man that comes into the world. It's Jesus. He was in the world and the world was made by him. Yet the world didn't know him. Come on, he came to his own. How many say, just lay your hands on your eyes and say, Lord, give me fresh revelation today. And as I move into 2022, let me see afresh, Lord. Even as your word says that where there's no prophetic vision, the people perish, Lord. Lord, let me have a prophetic understanding. Proverbs 29, 18, Lord, give me a prophetic revelation, Lord. Let me have vision. Let me have insight, Lord, that I would learn how to say no to things that are not of my benefit and say yes to the proper thing. How many guys, some of us, we would want to say yes to everything. That's not necessary wisdom, but sometimes we have to say no because saying no to certain things is really saying yes to your call and your purpose. And so it says, Proverbs 29, 18, without a prophetic vision, the people perish. Or it says without a understanding, people cast off restraint. Or what it says is that they don't know how to say no. Come on, how many know the Lord wants to teach us to say no to things that are, are the things that we know that are not of our benefit, Right? And say yes to the things that add, make for our peace. And so in verse 11 it says, he came to his own and his own received him not. But here it is. But as many as receive him. Come on, that's you and I. And guess what? You can receive him today. I don't know about you. I want to receive him every day. Every day, every day, I can make a choice to open up my heart and say, Jesus, I'm making room. And receive. But as many as receive him, to them he gave power Power, come on, how many guys, you know, you and I need a fresh dose of his anointing, of his power to be like him or to be the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Come on, you and I need power. Not to be great, not to be of ourselves, but power to obey, power to yield, to power to say yes to him and no to our flesh and no to the devil. Verse 13, which were born, come on, this is you and I, listen to this, here it is, here's your birthday scripture, this is your, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, how many of you know man can't do it, flesh won't do it, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by the spirit of God, which were born not of blood, nor of the flesh, nor of man, but of God, how many of you guys here have to remind you, say I'm born of God. And if you're born of God, then greater is he that's inside of you than he that's in the world. And you and I can overcome. You can overcome yourself. You can overcome you. You can overcome sin. You can overcome the world. You can overcome the devil because Jesus is an overcomer. But part of us, come on, let's be honest. Sometimes we don't want to overcome. Because overcoming means we got to face our fears. we got to face our insecurities. we got to face our giants. Thank you. We got to change. And the word was made flesh. And he dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Jesus, we're thankful, Lord, that you're so full of, of grace. Lord, your grace, your strength. Lord, your strength, Lord, grace is your strength, Lord, that comes to us, Lord, that gives us, Lord, strength to overcome and face life and face situation that, situations that have, have caused us or, or has caused us pain or difficulty. We thank you. And so in Isaiah chapter 60, it says this, arise, and we shared this last week, arise and shine for your light has come. Say, my light and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Put your name there. Say, me. me. 
Come on, he wants to write. And for behold, darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Sounds like our day. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. So what did I say? Lift up your eyes. Come on, lift up your eyes all around and see. Come on, lift up your eyes and close your eyes if you have to so you can see. Come on, you can see, see into the spirit. Lift up your eyes and see all around you. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar. Your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant, and your hearts shall swell with joy. Do you know the, the word of God is awesome? And sometimes you just read the word of God and let it read you, and you're like, it'll produce faith and, and joy and It'll, it'll, it'll produce some, something better than a, a turkey leg inside of you. The joy, and you will become radiant, and your heart will swell with joy. Joy. Can you say joy? joy. Now, joy has nothing to do with how you feel because you can feel. Come on, you think about Mary. Here was Mary. She gets this prophecy. She's highly favored, and God's with her. And then she has to ride on a dumb donkey Nine months pregnant into a city. I don't know about you. You ever hung out with a pregnant lady? Some of you guys have. It's not all that joyous sometimes, right? There's contradiction. There's pain. There's, right? And can you imagine marrying me like, God, if you said this, then why? Come on, why didn't I get to the Ritz-Carlton? Come on, how many of you guys think that? Why didn't I just get the, you know, the uh, abounding treatment? I, you know, right now I'm a basing but, uh, you know, I should be abounding. I should get this word of, of prophecy, of highly being favored, and everything's going well. And, I mean, you know, Mary had to face contradiction, but she knew that the Lord was with her. She knew she carried that child from, from birth, I mean, from, from infancy, from conception into fruition, into birthing. But can you imagine coming to that time of birth and there was probably some contradiction going on. There probably was some emotion. There probably was some words that weren't all, you know, I don't know. But thank God, Mary was, she was blessed. But it says joy, your heart will swell with joy. Because of the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. And the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. That's verse 5. I'm going to look at your neighbor and say, the camels are coming. That's what Pastor Mike always says. The camel, this is, where, this is that verse where you get it from. And the multitude of camels shall cover you or cover your land. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense and they shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. Lord, we thank you today, Lord, that you're arising and shining in our heart. Lord, let us never forget, Lord. Let us never go back and dwell in the shadows of darkness, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you've touched our hearts, that, Lord, a continual praise will always be in our mouth. Lord, that no matter what we're dealing with, Lord, that we will always have a continual praise upon our lips, Lord, in the morning and in the noonday and in the night, Lord, and even in the night season, Lord, that uh, even as Pastor Pat said, every day begins in the dark, Lord. And so, Lord, let not the darkness, Lord, let us not feel that we're alone because even as your word says in Psalm 139, even the darkness is as light to you. So we thank you for shining. Thank you for arising upon us and so we say arise and shine for our light has come and his glory shall be seen upon you Isaiah 9 I'm going to go back to Isaiah 9 verse 6 it says for unto us a child is born Lord we thank you for Jesus Lord we thank you for the birthing of Jesus inside of us but also to us a son is given. Lord, we thank you that, Jesus, you are the light and you are the son that was given for all of humanity to come to the Father. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, 
the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. And so Jesus, during this Christmas season, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that for unto, unto me, unto us, a child was born, and unto humanity a son was given. And so, Lord, we thank you that you are wonderful, that you are a counselor, you are a mighty God, you are an everlasting Father, you are the Prince of Peace. And so we pray, Lord, for your peace be upon all of us today. Lord, we thank we'd come to a new revelation of the Father and of your love. Lord, we'd come to a new experience of your might. Lord, that you're mighty, that you're a mighty God. Lord, you're a wonderful counselor. You're wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. In my last verse, if I could share this with you. As I was praying for this service, I said, Lord, what do you want to put upon your church and your people? And I felt that the Lord would say, uh, just a fresh anointing to be like him. A fresh anointing. A fresh anointing. In Isaiah 61, and this is the verse when Jesus began his ministry, and it's recorded in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus went into, as he came off the fast, and he came back into the temple, and it says that he opened up the book, and he opened up, or it says it fell upon Isaiah 61, and it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's you. I put my name there. So the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. That's, that's our mandate, is to preach the gospel, to preach the good news, to go and say, there's good news, the good news of the gospel. He's anointed me. How many guys is putting a fresh anointing upon us to preach good tidings to the poor? A fresh anointing to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. And then to comfort all who mourn. Thank you. To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified, and they shall rebuild the old ruins, and they will raise up the former desolations, and they will repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. The son of the foreigner shall be your plowman and your vine dresser, but you shall be named the priest of the Lord. They shall call you the servant of our God. You will eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Instead of confusion, you will rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double and everlasting joy shall be theirs now that's pretty good for pastor steve but i want you to give it up for the word of god for god's promises that's god's promises over you so lord we thank you for a fresh anointing can you just stand to your feet and just lift your hands say lord thank you thank you for a fresh anointing lord as we come into this last sunday of 2021 Lord, and we look forward to what you're doing in 2022, Lord. Let us, Lord, not move ahead, but say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the spirit of Christ, of Christmas, being birthed in my heart this day. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, let me, let me never be in a hurry just to move past and get it over with. Lord, because it's just another level of encountering your presence. 
encountering your healing. As we go tomorrow and next day and next day and next day, as it said, on the eighth day, Mary and Joseph took Jesus into the temple, which was the custom. And they presented him in the t to get circumcised. Come on, how many of you know that Christmas continues after Christmas? Come on, on the eighth day, on the day of new beginning. And it says the high priest and that prophetess Anna were there. And the, how many of you know that? How many know that Christmas wants to continue into the eighth day? So when is the eighth day? I think that may be next Monday on January, January, I don't know what day, maybe January 3rd. On January 3rd, when you got to go back to work or whatever you got to do, and you got to face the nasty. Now, it's kind of nice being in the Christmas vacation, but when you go back on Monday morning, January, whatever, how many know on that day, on that day, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same victory that you have today, you will carry on that Monday, January, on that eighth day. How many know that there'll be a new revelation of Jesus? And there'll be a new prophecy over your life and a new declaration. And you can say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Do you have a thank you in your heart? Say, Lord, don't, let ever, don't ever let it die. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, put it in my spirit. Put it in my bones, Lord. Let the fire, let the anointing, Lord, let the presence, oh God. Come on, stir it up. Even as Paul told Timothy, he says, to fan into flame that inner fire, stir up the gift of God inside of you. For God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. So we thank you for soundness of mind. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for a spirit of power. Come on. We thank you for a new love, oh God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, I need a fresh anointing. Lord, I need a fresh anointing. Lord,
you're here today, you said, Pastor Steve, I need a fresh anointing. And maybe it's anointing to heal you or to comfort you or to give you joy or to give you power. I just want to invite you to come out of your seat and just come to the altar on this last Sunday. Maybe it's an anointing just to say, Lord, thank you. Just open up your heart. We're going to continue to worship here and we'll pray for you. If you say, Pastor Steve, I don't want to live in the shadows anymore. I'm, I'm tired of the shadow of mourning or depression or any other thing that's caused you pain. You say, Pastor Steve, I don't want to take that with me into the new year. I'm here just to receive. Just come on. We're going to just bless you today. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I need a fresh anointing. If you mean it, just lift up your hands and sing it with us. Come on. Lord, I need a fresh anointing. Lord, I need a fresh anointing. Resting, Lord. fresh anointing. Anointing just means the enabling power of God. If you have the anointing of God, you have the enabling power of God. Let's sing it one more time. Lord, I need a fresh anointing. Lord, this altar today, Lord God, for those that have their hands raised, Lord God. God, I pray, Father, for a fresh anointing, Father, to come upon him right now, Lord God. Father, we thank you for your anointing, your enabling power. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost that came upon Mary, Lord God. So let your spirit come upon us today, Lord God. The power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, we thank you that through you we can do anything. God, that you are in us, Lord God. Father, and you are for us, Lord God. And we thank you for the power, Lord God, of the Holy Ghost coming upon us. Birth something new in us, Lord God. Come on, birth of your vision for the world, Lord God. Father, we're hungry and we're thirsty for you, Lord God. And Father, we ask you that you would come and that you would overshadow us with your presence. Be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it right now. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Lord, we thank you for your blessing. Lord, we thank you for keeping us. Lord, we thank you for your face shining upon us. Lord, we thank you that you're so gracious to us. Lord, that you lift up your countenance. Lord, you allow us to come and see you face to face. Lord, and we thank you that you give us your peace. Come on, just thank him and God bless you. Have a great day. You're dismissed in the presence of the Lord. God bless you. Have a great day.